Hello and welcome to Where's Waldo, the television show where we trace the battle of the individual versus society through the sands of time. This week we'll be focusing on the American dream. Nowadays, it's easy to pick up a Where's Waldo book and find the individual despite the enormous size of the crowd. Similarly, in reality, it's easy for individuals to assert their rights in society. However, was it the same nearly a century ago? By looking at the results of many Supreme Court cases, we're going to answer this question and even see if the future is even more promising for individuals like Waldo who want to stand out in a crowd of society. So, let's rewind our clocks and get started. The first case we will look at is Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896. Four years earlier, Homer Plessy well, boarded a car yeah, off the East Louisiana Railroad in New Orleans that was meant for use by white patrons only as declared by state law. When in an act of planned civil disobedience, Plessy refused to leave the white car and moved to the color car, he was arrested and sentenced to jail by state judge John Ferguson. Supreme Court Justice Henry Brown stated, Equal rights cannot be secured except by an enforced commingling of the two races. If the civil and political rights of both races be equal, one cannot be inferior to the other civilly or politically. If one race be inferior to the other socially, the Constitution of the United States cannot put them upon the same plane. As a result, although Brown acknowledged that both blacks and whites were on paper equal, he was well aware that the separate but equal society that he fostered was clearly unequal. The result was a clear loss for African American civil rights workers across the nation. In this case, the typical individual, Waldo, was being heavily restricted and controlled by society. Fortunately, the story of societal suppression was no different for women of the same time period. Less than 30 years later, in the early 20th century, in the case of Atkins vs. Children's Hospital, a female elevator operator found activist support by the D.C. Children's Hospital when her employer refused to acknowledge the district law that established a minimum wage. As a result, the Children's Hospital brought its fight against the wage board to the Supreme Court in 1923. Given that few male employees supported the female elevator operator due to their generous pay scale, the court case soon turned into a ruthless battle over women's rights. In the end, Justice Sutherland sided against the activists and with the wage board. Proudly stated, the law takes into account of the necessities of only one party to the contract. It ignores the necessities of the employer by compelling him to pay not less than a certain sum, not only whether the employee is capable of earning it, but irrespective of the ability of his business to sustain the burden. However, all was not lost for Waldo because in the mid-20th century, public opinion on civil rights took a major turn. In the landmark case of African American civil rights, the case Brown v. Board of Education of 1954, decisively rescinded the separate but equal ideology that the Plessy v. Ferguson case has set forth. In the parent of a black child, Oliver Brown, fought against the Education Board of Topeka, Kansas in the Supreme Court on whether segregated schools were constitutional, Chief Justice Warren Burger finally sympathized with the cause of African American civil rights. He wrote, does the segregation of children in public schools solely on the basis of race deprive the children of the minority group of equal educational opportunities? We believe that it does. We conclude that in the field of public education, the doctrine of separate but equal has no place. Separate educational facil facilities are inherently unequal. As a result, millions of individuals of the Black-White Coalition rejoiced across the nation as schools everywhere became desegregated in the coming years. Moreover, the case proved that American public was more welcoming than ever to the achievement of minority rights. These minorities included women as well. In 1973, the milestone case Roe v. Wade also reversed the ideology of gender discrimination. When Jane Roe, a representative of a pregnant woman, fought against Wade, a representative of the state of Texas, a controversy over abortion quickly made its way to the Supreme Court. But unlike the last time when, in Atkins v. Children's Hospital, women were left vulnerable to the harsh mor morals of society, the verdict of 1973 proved a victory for women everywhere. Judge Stewart stated, the right of the individual, married or single, to be free from unwarranted governmental intrusion into matters so fundamentally affecting a person as this is the decision whether to bear or beget a child. That right necessarily includes the right of a woman to decide whether or not to terminate her pregnancy. Clearly, therefore, the court today is correct in holding that the right asserted by Jane Roe is embraced within the personal liberty pro protected by the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. So, throughout the 20th century, individuals of all types, the black minority or the vast pool of women throughout the country, had made gains in advancing their individual freedom. Waldo was nearly liberated from the harsh morals of society. However, the full job yet remained undone. Today, the American dream continues to demand individual freedom, specifically in the realm of gay rights. For the past century, homosexuals have been highly criticized and stripped of their rights. 
However, today it is increasing the trend to fight for the silent majority. Given the many state bans on homosexual marriages and even relationships, in a few years the issue of gay marriage will be sure to make its way to the Supreme Court. In the case hypothetically named Abel vs. Baker, Abel will be the alias for a homosexual couple seeking marriage in the ultra conservative state of Texas, and Baker will be a representative of that state. Although many states have already passed legislation accommodating for gay marriage, the Supreme Court will force all states to endorse it. Chief Justice John Roberts would state, Being a simple state of mind and conscience, homosexuality should not render one anything but an individual. Therefore, as individuals in this nation of the United States, homosexuals must be given the basic freedoms, reiterated since its inception, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Inclusive of these is the right to marriage and vehicle association. It has been deemed that the plaintiff, Abel, and every individual is citizen of this nation. As a result of Robert's bold holding, conservative states everywhere would gradually lift their ban on homosexual marriage. Despite initial resistance, this case would nevertheless prove the progression of the American dream in advancing the rights of the individual, regardless of democratic profile. So, in the end, our journey throughout time has showed us the progression of individual freedom. Even though the individual began constricted by society, we soon learned, through the examination of Supreme Court cases, that he would be a very much free man by the end of the 20th century. In the years to come, rest assured that Waldo would stand out in the crowd of society. That's all for tonight, folks. Until next time.